Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. In this video we'll be creating a map handler as opposed to actually hard coding the maps and the scenes to change to in the network manager. We'll have this class that handles going to the next map and then storing that in a list so that we don't get the same map again and again. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. So the usual three steps for this video, step one, we'll be creating the code for the map handler. Then for step two, over in Unity, we'll actually be creating a map set and we'll be setting up the scriptable object there. And then finally for step three, we'll be testing inside Unity. Hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. So the way you do this part is completely dependent on what your game is like. For mine, there are lots of maps, there are small maps, and how it works is uh, it picks a random map, you go to it, and once it's done, you go to a new map and it's random, okay? So if that's what you're going for, then you know you can follow along with me, otherwise you'll have to kind of tweak it a little bit. But I've made map sets, so the different sets is like for maybe um, different events, different game modes, you might have different maps, okay? So you can make an instance of the scriptable object with all the maps in your game if you want that for whatever you're doing. So here's a string, a list of strings, sorry. And because I've used the scene attribute, it means in the editor, these all show up as scenes. It's a lot easier for us to actually set it up. And then we can request from this class um, the maps, and it's a read-only collection of strings, meaning we can't modify this by accident, okay? And we're going to use that over in the map handler. So the map handler is a normal c -sharp class that stores a read-only collection of string for the maps. So in the constructor in a second, you'll see it actually grabs the maps from the map set, and then we don't need the map set anymore. We have the number of rounds because we can actually tweak that, you know, based on user input. Maybe when they create their lobby, they select, I want 10 rounds or five or whatever, right? Um, we also then, of course, need to store our current round and our remaining maps. So what we can do is you can maybe have it so that once you've cycled through all the maps, uh, if there's still more rounds to go, then we just repeat, okay? We start getting the maps again, um, completely up to, you know, however your game is designed. So in the constructor, we take in the map set as well as the number of rounds we want to play. And what that does is, it basically stores the maps, which if you remember from earlier, we actually just get this as a read-only collection, so we can't modify it by accident. And then we uh, just quickly store the number of rounds over here, and then we say reset maps, and reset maps is a method I've made down here that just literally um, sets remaining maps to be maps to list. So this, this list never is modified, it just gets set in the constructor and stays there. This uh, whoops, this one here is dynamic. As we go through a map and a map and a map, they get removed from this list. So then once we're out, we need to reset. But we also need to reset effectively at the start, okay? So I just made a quick method for that. It's also quite handy to be able to check if the game is complete. So to check if it's complete, we just say, is our current round equal to the number of rounds there are in the game? And then finally, we have a getter for a string. Now you could make this a normal function if you want, but I just made it a getter. So it returns a string. If the game is complete, it returns null because there's no more maps. When we actually request the next map, we also increment the current rounds. Now, maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you want to grab the next map without actually going to it. But the way I've got it is whenever you go to the next map, you know, that's definitely happening. You're going to the next round. It's not like a preview or anything. So we're saying increase the current round count. Okay. Now, if we're out of maps, we need to reset the maps. Okay. So make sure here that we've definitely got some maps left. Then we just pick a random map from the remaining maps, so between zero and the count. And then once we've got that map, we actually remove it from our list of remaining maps because, as I said, we don't want the same map again and again. And then finally, return it to whoever's asking. So now over in our network manager, we'll make a new header for the map stuff, okay? And then we'll make a serialized field private int, whoops, private int for the number of rounds to play. And I'm going to set that to one for now, though obviously you want that to be dynamic somewhere, the player can set it or whatever. And then um, we also want to store a map set, so right now we can just hard code, or not hard code, but set in the inspector the map set to use. Obviously this is something you might also want to be dynamic. Then down here above the public events, we're going to make a private field for a map handler. And we're just going to leave it to be null by default, because we want to set this up over when we start the game. So over here, just before we actually change to the first scene, instead we want to now say, let's make the new instance of the map handler. Okay, so it's a new map handler, and it wants a map set, which we have at the top. Okay, and it wants a number of rounds, which we also have at the top. Now that accidentally went capital. Okay, so now we've got that new map handler, and all we need to do is instead of scene map 01 being hard coded, we just say map handler dot next map. Okay. And that's actually going to go grab that next map and handle incrementing the current round we're on. So we can actually say to it when we um, finish the first round, are there any more rounds? If so, what's the next map? Okay. So we haven't actually got logic for going to the next round after we start the game. 
because there's no actual game loop right now. You just spawn in and run around. So in the next few videos, we'll actually be creating the logic so that you can uh, hit the other players, they can lose health, and then once, you know, there's only one player left standing, then we'll actually go to the next scene, and then that's where we'll come back to visiting this stuff. But now that we can actually press play, have a random map be chosen, and store that, I think we're at a point where we can test it now. Of course, before we test it, we actually need to make a map set. So for step two, let's go and create a map set, and we'll call it just map set underscore default. Okay. And this wants a list of maps. So we currently have two. So I've got scene map 01. Whoops, if I can drag that in successfully. Drag scene map 02. So um, let's try that again. Ah, we need to add it to the build settings, of course. Okay, it's in the build settings. Now let's drag it in here. Uh, for scene map 02, all I did was just duplicate scene map 01 and added some extra terrain in here just to, so we can visually see the difference when we go to the scenes, okay? And now that we've made the map set, we actually need to go and put it in our network manager. So if we look down here somewhere, the map set, let's drag that in. Okay, I think we're ready to test. Go ahead and build your game and we'll see what happens. Okay, so if I confirm host ready, and then we do the usual joining, okay, and we press start, we get the map zero or map 01. So this is the one without the thing in the middle. Okay, and let's keep trying again until we get the other one. Let's try again. Hey, there we go. Okay, we got the other map. So there we have it. Now when we start, we can actually get a random map from our set of maps. So you can go ahead and keep making more maps. And all you need to do is just once you've made them, make sure they're in the build settings of your project and then drag them into this list. And then there you go. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It'd help a lot. Let me know down below what you want to see next. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my supporters with special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Malvin, Zumran, David McDermott, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Rec, Yoris Letter, Rene, Remy Baldwin, and Jay Donald. If you'd like to help out the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. As well as that, we've now got YouTube membership enabled on the channel as we're starting weekly live streams. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.